That's right. I've sold all my Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA, and AMD. Why? Because of these two guys. These two guys have cre created a risk factor that I don't want to deal with. And in order to protect me from that, I'm learning as much as I can about the situation. I read this book about six months ago, and I understand where Xi Jinping is going. And now I'm reading the, these two books, The Story of World War II and uh, Winston Churchill's uh, The Gathering Storm. Why? Because there's another gathering storm, and the risk coefficient has just skyrocketed. And if you haven't figured it out, it's time you do. It's time you figure out what's about to happen, because history repeats itself. Look, I got an advantage. I'm 78 years old. I've been through this before. I know what's going to happen, and you need to know what's going to happen before it happens. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. After Adolf Hitler became chancellor of uh, Germany, he basically marched into Austria and basically said, I'm here and we're going to pretty much run the show from this point on. And Austria basically said, okay, we got no problem with that. Well, about that time, uh, Chamberlain went and made a trip to uh, to Berlin to meet with uh, Hitler, and he came home and told his, uh, his parliament that everything's fine, Adolf isn't going any further than this, everything will be okay. Well, shortly thereafter, uh, Adolf uh, went into uh, Poland and invaded. But before he went into Poland, he went and met with uh, Mussolini. Mussolini was the prime minister or emperor or whatever he was called of Italy. And what he wanted to know was, if I do this, what are you going to do? And Mussolini said, well, I don't think I want you to do it. But Hitler went ahead and did it. And Mussolini then uh, uh, agreed with him. From that point on, Hitler went into France. Now you know basically the story. Now I want you to just change the names and the places and figure out what's going on. Vladimir decided he was going to go into Ukraine. He expected, much as Hitler did in Austria, to basically walk in, take over, and everything go away. After all, uh, the, the, the president of um, Ukraine was nothing more than a stand-up comedian, so he would get no resistance there, but he had a bit of a surprise. The other thing you need to know is, what did the United States do in all of this? They just sat back and walked watched. They just, and they raised their hand and said, we are going to get involved in this, but wait a second, if you need armaments and, and, and uh, military equipment, we'll manufacture it for you. And that's how the United States ended up with most of the gold that came out, that uh, was transferred to the United States to pay for their, their military armament. At that point, nothing happened until December the 7th. And that was when Japan bomb Pearl Harbor. Okay, now you know the story. Now you know what the story of World War II and the gathering storm. We've got another gathering storm, and we have uh, Mussolini. No, his name is Xi Jinping meeting with Adolf. No, his name is Vladimir the end of this month. And they're going to sit down and they're going to say, what are you going to do when I go on to my next conquest beyond um, Ukraine? And Xi Jinping says, well, you're not doing that well, uh, Vladimir. In fact, you've been pushed back. Yeah, but I got these missiles that I can I can blow up Kiev in, in a matter of seconds, and then I move on. What are you going to do, Zizan? Well, Zizan said, do you do that? I'll probably invade um, uh, Taiwan. Is that all you're going to do, Xi? No, uh, I think I'll go and take on Guam as well. And the U.S.'s closest military installation. I don't know if it's Guam. I don't know if it's Hawaii. I don't know if it's Midway. I don't know. But this is what we're about to see. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But the market is starting to react like maybe I'm right. Now, the market today is down 3% and 4%. Uh, let's see, the Dow is down 
uh, 2.3, and the Nasdaq's down 3.4. But I want you to look at a couple of tickers. Look at LNG. It's up 4%. Look at YXI. It's up 3%. Look at CWCO. It's up 5%. While the rest of the market is down. Why? Well, YXI is a short on China. Huh, that's interesting, Kerry. CWCO is about water, and LNG is about liquid natural gas. There's something going on, a lot more than hiring interest rates, which are going to continue to go up, but we are at a point of a gathering storm. Remember that name. Read this book. How many books do you read a year? How many do you read a month? To learn what history has telling you. We learn from history because it all involves human beings and human beings react the same way. My wife asked me, do you really think Vladimir Putin would go and, and nuke the Ukraine? I said, well, let me ask you this, Nita. I said, if someone broke into our house and wanted to rob us and we put up resistance and they had a shotgun on the porch and we, we said, no, you're not going to rob us. And I went and got a knife and went after them. Do you think they'd go to the porch and get their shotgun and blow my head off? Of course they would. So what would Vladimir do? Is this an is he a man that acts out of instinct or does uh, uh, or just emotion? No. I was with an executive of a co Russian company this past week in Orlando, Florida. And he's 35 years old. And I said, well, yes, he lives in Russia. And I said, what's, what's living in Russia like? And he says, well, he says, I get paid because I do most of my business in the United States in U.S. dollars, but I pay my mortgage in rubles. And he says, and my mortgage rate, get this, my mortgage rate is 14.6%. Wow. I said, that's, out, that's, out, that's crazy. Our mortgage rates are down around 3 and 4 and maybe 6%. He said, yeah, but five years ago, Vladimir offered me a free mortgage and a guaranteed approved loan if I joined the Army. Yeah, five years ago. Vladimir has been planning this for five years. Now, he said when he was of gathering his troops in January on the border of Ukraine. This is just a military exercise. We do it every year. We're not going to invade Ukraine. That was lie number one. Now he's saying the we're going to have to shut down the oil and gas pipes coming into Europe because of maintenance, and we can't do the maintenance because of the sanctions that you've put on us. That's lie number two. If I'm counting, but I don't know, there may be many more. The fact is, what I want you to understand is the risk factor. And that's what investing is, measuring risk against reward. The risk is too great. That's why I sold all my tech stocks. They, are, they, they will move with the market. If China blows up, where is Amazon going to get the 76% of the goods that they send you? Why, why did Amazon shut down 1,000 of its, its uh, distribution uh, for last hour centers and 25 of their distribution center. Why did they do that? Why did they lay off 100,000 people? Why did they do that? Think about it. It's called The Gathering Storm by Winston Churchill. It was, it was written before you were born but it's reoccurring. And if you will just look back in history, you can see what's going to happen next. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I am not going to take the 20% hit that I think the tech stocks are going to take when the bombs start flying and the world blows up and we can't get goods. We can't get semiconductors. You can't get iPhones. You can't get shoes. You can't get socks. And everything shuts down. What happens to the shipping industry? What happens to the railroad industry? What happens to the banks 
who are holding all this debt on Evergrande and the other real estate developers that overbuilt China. What happens to our system? (laughs) Winston Churchill told you what was going to happen. It's all right there. And if I'm wrong, okay, I'm wrong. But I'm not going to take another 40% beating from the stock market like I have thus far. But I'm going to bully up and short China, and I'm going to buy liquid natural gas, and I'm going to buy water. Have you seen the drought that is going on in China? What is the most water-needed crop in the world? Think about it. The most water-needed crop in the world. Rice. What is China's number one crop? Guess. You guess. It's not corn. It's not wheat. It's rice. And they're having a drought. And they're having a real estate crisis. And nobody will trade in their currency. If you can't see this, bring it down to your household. The the grocery won't take your currency. So you have to go get your neighbor's currency, who you've got a IOU from, in order to buy goods. That's us. We provide them with dollars because we buy so much from them, so much more than they buy from us. What happens when we when Amazon stops buying because they can't get it? Because of war, because of, of, of drought, because they're shutting down their plants. What happens when Apple stops buying their phones and they can't get dollars? Who do they trade with? Russia? Maybe Africa, where, where they're building roads. Okay. It's up to you. But This is going to happen in my world. But I've only been around for 78 years. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Read. Understand the world around you. Connect the dots. If this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, what happens next? It's all right there. (laughs) It's a repeat of history. So, that's what this channel's all about, a repeat of history. A a look into the back, a a view from my 78-year-old eyes. What I want to do is help you make better investment decisions, teach you how to learn how to keep more of what you make, but first you got to make it, and then to build family wealth. We're going to go through an unprecedented time, but have faith. Because behind all this is artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum computing, genome sequencing, genome editing, genome therapy. The world is going to become a better place. We just got to get through this. We got to get through the situation that China grew too fast. They overbuilt. That Russia is dying Their demographics, look at their demographics. They have no young people. They stopped making babies. If you don't have babies, you don't have consumers. If you don't have consumers, you don't have taxpayers. If you don't have taxpayers, your currency becomes worthless. Go visit Cuba. I spent a week in Cuba. I understand what happens when a bushel basket of your currency won't buy a candy bar anywhere else other than in your country. You die from the inside. Okay, I get a little riled up about this, but I take my NMN. I take that every day, and uh, it gives me this energy. Look into it. There's a, there's a, there's a deal down below. Uh, and then I, I, I also want you to read my book about who are you and why are you you? You need to understand what drives you. You need to get rid of that unwanted roommate in your head and, um, and, and reach the place I have. I just wish it hadn't taken me so damn long to get here. But I will talk to you again tomorrow. 